My name is Matthew Klein, and I have the honor of introducing the reigning, defending, undisputed pop culture podcast champions of the world, Alex, Joe, those two geeks. I'm probably going to keep Love that it. for a while. That is no, fantastic. That is amazing. Everybody. As I stated, my name is Matthew. I'm here with Alex and Joe. We are here for another episode of Those Two Geeks. My voice is already gone because I did not do a proper vocal warm-up before that introduction. Alex, Joe, thank you for giving me the honor of the intro this morning, and good to be here. As always, it's good to have you here. Uh, For those of you who are freshly joining us, Matthew, uh, one trivia last week yes versus joe and it was, a cl- uh, it was close it, it was, was real, very it was close. Real close it was one. very close uh, so yes. trivia may or may not be a month or a, a semi-frequent thing we do depending on how often we can find something to quiz each other on that said the prize for trivia for matthew that matthew chose was to choose a topic now i'm super excited to talk about free comic book day yeah i'm absolutely. assuming that was your topic because that's what we had, we had talked about Yes, that was my topic. I didn't mean so, to. I didn't mean to cut, cut you into that. No, it's fine. So, what I, are you? What are you eating? I'm not eating. I'm sorry. God, I keep forgetting the microphone is good. I'm blasted apple. It's my dog <laughs> stuff. Sorry, <laughs> listeners, people. God, the irony is, if I wasn't trying, it you wouldn't hear me. But I'm trying to be a ninja, and it's like. Yeah, it, it, was, it was it was one of those things in the background. I'm like, I'm like, is that like is that my audio background or is that Joe no, or is that me. okay? Sorry, Matthew. Well, no, it's fine. Look, I I think Free Comic Book Day we're we're not even we're roughly about a month after this year's Free Comic Book Day, and one of the fun things is my my day job is I work for Penguin Random House and I sell mm-hmm. comics to comic book stores. But like you, Alex, I've I've worked in a comic shop. Um, I've worked for a comic book publisher. And Free Comic Book Day is is one of those things that a lot of, uh, especially casual comic book fans, hear about. But do they know what goes into it? And also, sometimes we like to talk about the business of the comic book industry. Um, and this is such a major, pivotal component. And one of the things that we talk about at Penguin Random House and that we hear from a lot of comic shops is that there tends to be a little bit of a lack of education within the fandoms and and customers Mm -hmm. who about certain aspects of the industry and why they're important and how they influence um the books that do or don't make it onto the shelf and in your pull boxes so i was thinking you know free comic book day is is one of the the best known um, initiatives from the industry and and there's a lot of in the ever-changing world of comic book retail and it is a very interesting time for comic book retail that we'll discuss um, I thought it could be a fun topic where all three of us have different perspectives uh, on this in, in terms of how it works and also what the future of it might be so that was my thinking on this so hopefully hopefully the listeners will enjoy it Fingers crossed. Like, like as we said, um, I know we use the term off camera, but none of us are actually on camera uh, it's true. today. Uh, so we were talking off camera, it just in regards to the different perspectives that we have with it. Like, like you said, you've got the publishing business side of it. Yeah. Joe being the pure consumer. And then I've got Correct. the, I, I work in a comic book shop once a week or as needed. And also as a consumer, so you get to see the three different positions yeah, of yeah. this. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how how it comes out. I think one of the times it came up very briefly and we made an effort to not delve into it, you had talked about Matthew, you had talked about your Practices. views on having yeah. um sales, sales on free comic book. So so let me do a little intro, a little background info for the um, for for all of you, dear listeners, who maybe you're like, what is Free Comic Book Day? I've sort of heard of it, but what is it? So Free Comic Book Day happens the first Saturday of May every single year. It is a day um, in which comic book shops are 
uh, provided product by publishers to give away for free to their consumers. Mm -hmm. um, now, it is not free for the comic shops to buy from the publishers they don't, uh, and their distributors. They don't receive it for free. I'll get into wow. that in a second. But okay. what they do is publishers basically create product that, generally speaking, is like a preview. It, it's right. like a trailer for their biggest movie coming out that year. Um, mm -hmm. It is a, a comic book, generally 32 pages um, long, at least 20 to 24 pages of actual story content, right. where they are giving free snippets and oftentimes the first exclusive um, snippets, if you will, for their upcoming giant summer blockbuster storylines. Like this year for Marvel, they did Blood Hunt. Um, yep. DC did uh, Absolute Power. Absolute Power. And, and it's open for any and all comic book publishers who um, are distributed by Diamond Comics to go ahead and apply to. Um, you have mm. to apply for the process. You begin applying. If the, the event happens in May, you start applying in the fall. You have to finalize your application by January. Um, they are all applications from publishers are reviewed by a committee um, of folks. Often they are different comic shop retailers and comic shop and comic industry professionals. Um, and then they make the decision and there are two tiers of books released. There are gold books and there are silver books. Gold books um, are required to have a certain amount ordered by any comic book store that is participating in free comic books day. You are not allowed to skip that book. That book is mandatory. You have to purchase X amount of copies. Okay. Silver tier books are the also rans, if you were on some level. Um, they still get you, you are not required. No comic shop is required to order silver level, silver tier, I should say, uh, free comic book day product. Right. So if you're a publisher and you're a silver, you can't guarantee that a shop will carry your book and you will not, you, you always never have the same type of order numbers, um, as the gold tier ones. Now okay. free comic book day was started. It was proposed originally in the summer of 2001 by a gentleman named Joe Field, who operates a shop in Southern California called Flying Colors. Flying Colors, hmm. uh, Joe is a very, very smart guy. He has been around for decades and decades, obviously. And his proposal was to sort of utilize the free scoop promotion that Baskin Robbins would do once, um, I think it was once a year at that point. Yeah, interesting. Okay. And it would draw it would draw people in, and it would sort of sort of be the kickoff to a season for Baskin Robbins. Right. And it would get a lot of people in the Baskin Robbins. And the idea was, if you attract them in there for free for something free, um, you would then be able to, to give the customer and consumer such a great experience that it was an opportunity to get them to come back again and do mm -hmm. repeat business. Um, it's kind of like a like a gym offering you five free visits. Um, right. They hope that they're going to sign you up over the course of those five free visits uh, or a trial period for a streaming service, what have you. It's the same tenant. If we give you something, yeah. if we give you a free taste, you'll come back and you'll be willing to pay for that um, service. Yeah, um, right. The original idea was to coincide free comic book day with the film launch with the film release of a big superhero film because superhero right. films in 2001 you'd had x-men you'd had blade um yeah. you'd had a couple of batman films and comic shops were noticing that there would be an increase in business so let's tie a giant free promotion around the tentpole release of mm -hmm. the kickoff of the summer blockbuster and so the very first free comic book day in may 2002 coincided with the release of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Spider yeah. That was the very, very, very first free comic book day. In general, from a, from, from a 30,000 overview of the industry, free comic book day is in general either the top 
or the second gross revenue day for a comic shop of the year. Um, it has become such an incredibly important day. If you have a bad free comic book day, people get very scared for the rest of yeah. the year. Um, if you have a very good one, it provides a little bit of hope and a little bit of a financial cushion right. for the next several months as well. And you can have anywhere from 30 to 50 free comic book days get offered. They are now... Um, publishers often will have two or three mm -hmm. comic book day offerings, one gold book in general, and then usually a silver book, unless you're certain publishers. Um, and there are different requirements every single year that get you a gold tier versus a silver tier. If you are offering brand new story, as opposed right. to a reprinted story that helps you. If you are friendly for all readers of all ages, that helps you. So there's certain content um, standards that publishers adhere to to try and get that gold tier. Now, again, it's not actually free for comic shop owners to get this product. They have to pay a very, very small fee. Yeah, I say, it's got to be discounted, right? In general, you're paying maybe 25 cents a copy that you get. Okay, okay. Um, you, you almost always buy in bundles. You don't buy right. in terms of one single copy. Um, and so you're charged by the bundle of books. Yep. So that's that's another aspect to to the purchasing. So again, it's negligible. It's very, very, very small. For but does each the publisher shops. choose mm -hmm. their own price? Because my yeah. particular comic stores around here, and when I say around here, I say within the greater 60-mile range, uh, New England comics is king around where I grow up. Yes. It's yeah. Yeah. So they tend to take whatever's offered for that free comic book day. I didn't get to go this year and they just throw it in a packaged, like pre-packed, yeah. like whatever's there. It's just a grab pack and they send yeah. and they give it to you, but you only get one because you're not allowed to get two. And um, well, that that's part of the discussion today is, is how shops actually implement Free right. comic book day and actually give away the product. So you have to you have to sign a contract for mm -hmm. to participate in free comic book day, and part of that contract is on the date of free comic book day, you are not allowed to charge for those books. Right. See, um, I thought otherwise it was more mm -hmm. like a glorified previews. Now I'm getting educated, and this is fascinating to me. So, I thought it was just like, here you go, this mm -hmm. is the promo, get it out, and while you get it out. Oh, we got people in our shop. Let's, you know, throw a bunch of sales, promos, and all kinds of things going on because that's what usually happens. I had no idea there's like an actual deliberation. Like these people actually oh, yeah. have to submit and things. I just thought it was, oh, hey, yeah. this is our new event. Boom, get it out there till it's done. I had no clue. That's very fascinating. So, like, so what it's... happens to the people who don't get submitted? I mean, who get submitted but don't get approved? Like what happens there? Um, They're not allowed on free comic book day. Well, uh, what they'll what they'll end up doing is a lot of them get relegated to the silver tier. So okay. it's up to it's up to them to message out to the shops individually mm -hmm. and say, "Hey, please purchase some of our free comic book day book. Right. This is why it's gonna it's gonna be doing this." But so they have to do a lot more marketing. Um, and messaging to the shops themselves directly to try and get those numbers up. Now, DC did, started doing something very interesting a few years ago, wherein they would have an, a sort of backdoor FCBD book in which they would offer a book that would come out uh, for, that would be a free giveaway the Wednesday before Free Comic Book Day. So it would be there on Free Comic Book Day and would oh, be I've given away as part of the promotion, even though it wasn't actually part. Yeah, of I've seen that, actually. I've actually. So tech, technically, they had a price tag of like 25 cents, Yeah, but, but they were given away by retailers for free anyway. Um, but sometimes you're just SOL, and you don't get to participate in, in free comic book right. day. Right. Um, now, in theory, you are, you know, you're told far enough in advance that you haven't printed the book, Mm -hmm. um, but at that point, then you've got to use as a publisher, you use your ingenuity to try and, and, and get out. Now, that doesn't happen a lot. You know, in general, 
if you don't get gold, you get silver, and you're right. just you know, yeah, you have to hope that people buy the book and that it's right. interesting enough. So my first so, ignorant question to you would be, please, outside of DC and Marvel, because sure. do you honestly? This is an ignorant question, and I want to explain to listeners who may not know, Peg, Penguin Random House is one of the big biggest publishers around. Period. You guys, yeah. you might even be king, to be honest. Um, I DC and Marvel, yeah. they can skip free comic book day, though, right? Honestly, like, no. this is for, like, Boom, no. and this is for, like, the other tertiary no, ones. they absolutely, they absolutely cannot skip free comic book day. Okay. Um, the reason and... I asked Matthew is because some free comic book days, like, if you look at 2023... And you look at this year, like this year, they stacked it. They stacked the deck. I actually looked at the sure. roster and I was like, oh, my God, that was a lot of stuff. That's how I knew about yep. absolute power and whatnot. But like last year, I felt like it was just cobbled and it was just like, yeah, whatever. Here you go. It was scrapped. well. And, and there you there's the proof in the pudding, isn't it, Joe? You can argue you can make an argument that when Marvel and DC have a lighter or or a less or a a what fans consider to be a lackluster free comic book day. Yeah. Um, suddenly, how does that affect their sales for the rest of the year? And how does that affect the confidence from the retailers who have to purchase their books before the consumer does? Um, and so they made it a big point. Marvel had a phenomenal approach this year for free comic book day because not only the, the publish, well, the strategy from a publisher and and Alex, I apologize. We'll we'll get to yeah, Alex. Uh, no, 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 no,
you like vampires, you like, you know, superheroes or video games, and you pick up this book, guarantee you're going to enjoy it. It is so good because, like, they start off with a bang. Anyone who wasn't, like, jaw agape when Thor got a stake through his eyes and his, his head, I'm like, oh, he's dead. And they're like, he's not dead. He's very wounded. And I'm like, oh, my God. But it's just been so good. I don't like these, you know, like Civil War was one. You remember Civil War, Matthew? Of I course. Like, I love the original Civil War. I remember issue two, Peter Parker on masks. It's the biggest thing ever. Civil War two, the sequel, was a wet fart. It was terrible from start to finish. And you it was know, not well received. Okay, um, it was not well received. <laughs> but like critically as a consumer, that's the point of view I'm giving as a diehard fan who adores this stuff. It was a really, really terribly executed follow-up to what was already a very controversial first arc. I loved it. It made sense to me. It's like, let's put superheroes in the real world. It's basically what the boys built off of. And it's like, it works. But Super Civil War II, it's kind of like Dark Knight Strikes Again. Like I lo- Or Dark Knight Strikes Back. I think we've already gone over this. But like I adore <laughs> Dark Knight Returns. I adore Dark Knight Returns. The sequel is hot garbage. It is so bad. It's not, it's like, what planet was Graham? I mean, what planet was, um, what's his name? Frank Miller on. But then you got the Master Race, which kind of brought it back. Wasn't great. But it was like, yeah, okay, you're kind of getting some of the luster. My whole point with this big segue, and I'm kind of nervous how quiet Alex is. My whole point is, outside of DC and Marvel, I feel like DC and Marvel are like WWE and AEW. If this was a wrestling convention or a wrestling promo, they would be the two that like, all right, if they don't fare well with what they're offering, it's not going to hurt them. But like a Boom Studios or an Image Comics, or like, um, I don't know, all the other smaller tertiary um, It's very publishers. critical for them. It's, it's so very critical. critical for them. And to when me... We, when we worked at, when I was at Valiant, you know, yeah, small publisher, there you go. six titles a month, you know, it was, we looked at Free Comic Book Day as, as easily a top five priority for the entire year, um, because it it was our biggest chance of the year to go outside of our, our diehard readership and try and get more casual lapsed or new readers interested in our product. Like if you are, if you are, in, and I, I don't say this with any actual knowledge, um, but if you are somebody like Mad Cave Studios or you yes, are a boom exactly. or you are an image um, or you are even, even an IDW, I would argue like free comic book day really, really, really matters. Um, and PRH publishers, we, you know, we would we have free comic book day offerings that are for a lot of like middle grade and and all ages books, and those matter. Yep. Those especially yep. in in comic shops that are, are still learning how to order that product, right? It, yep. it really, really, really matters. Um, but I, and, and again, it, it still matters for DC. It still matters. So if I, uh, yeah, Marvel, if I can Marvel interject Marvel. here yeah, and I ahead. apologize, Matthew, like this is your show. You're, you're We're supposed to be spectators. My whole thing no, is DC good. and Marvel from my experience in free comic book day for sure. many, many years, it's a very phoned in experience for DC and Marvel. They don't really, really try. There's been a couple off shots that they've, Threw out a banger, like Blackest Night was a free comic book day years mm-hmm. ago, and that was obviously yeah. a humongous story. Civil War was a free comic book day. Civil War II yep. was a free comic book day. But, um, you know, you've had some other ones that you're just like, Ugh, wow. Me, the, the always the exciting thing is now I don't get every free comic book because even though I am still a guy who goes to his LCM, I mean, LC... LCS. S- I'm sorry. LCS. Yes. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I haven't had sleep. LCS. I always look at this as like DC and Marvel are wounded going in. And this is like if I'm a smaller publisher, which I don't really consider Valiant. Valiant would have been like very close to chirping at number three or with Image at all times. 
I'm talking like an IDW Mad Cave, um, you know, Boom, and all those ones that have blown up in the past couple of years. I look at this like, this is my time. This is my time to just trounce DC and Marvel. It's not like that anymore. Because especially this year is what I'm going to point to as the example. Both publishers brought their A game. They did. Um, they did. You've got Blood Hunt, which is, it. people think it's a corny, stupid idea. I agree. But then please read it. It's fabulous. Um, Absolute Power. I read the free comic book day, Absolute Power. Who doesn't like Amanda Waller? Who doesn't like Suicide Squad? I'm stoked for this with DC. Marvel has a much better way of tying their stuff together in advance. DC is so terrible. The books are like, they're not even, like, if you look at Batman right now versus what's going to about to go on, you're like, oh, how does this fit? And I don't know how they're going to do it, but absolute power I'm excited for. I think it's so going Alex, to be I wanna, a big book. I was just going to say, the, the interesting thing that I've noticed about free comic so mm -hmm. I, and it, it's, yeah. So what I've noticed about Free Comic Book Day, when I when I have been working there, and a lot of the regulars that will come in, and even after the fact, they when when you come, they come in on on a Wednesday night or a Wednesday afternoon, right? And we'll be chatting about it. You find that hey, so I read I read TMNT uh, from Free Comic Book that Day. That was the can one you, I was going to point. Can you to. put yep. yeah? Can you put me down for the next couple of issues? I want to see. Yep. I want to I want to see if I can get into it. And a lot of them will use Free Comic Book Day as a way to get to judge, will I like the art style, the writing style, the story style of these books, yes. you know, as they come out, whether it's from uh, IDW, Dark Horse, uh, right. and anything like that. Like you see a lot of people picking up the more in indie stuff than mm -hmm. the Marvel and DC. Right. However, with Marvel and DC, if they don't have a significant offering, then you don't tend to get the more the, mm -hmm. the potential new readers in. So you won't get the families coming in who may not otherwise have come in with their kids yeah. to pick up a, a, a family friendly offering of Spider Man. Would you yeah. want them to read Blood Hunt? Yeah, I mean your uh, mileage may vary. As a, again, your mileage is going to vary as a parent. Like I remember reading that kind of stuff when I was um, not Blood Hunt. Obviously, it wasn't out, but when I was 10, 11, 12, 13, right. I. My parents are like it's it's comics. It's so if you if you're concerned, you can you can talk to us about it. But ultimately, right. it's comics. You you're fine. We've grown up on this over the show, right? Yeah. I grew up in the '80s. I Matthew, you too. My dad let me watch RoboCop when I was three. Oh, I get oh, his dick shot that's off intense. in the mo movie, and my dad was like, "It's okay." And I I look back at all the stuff he let me watch, and I'm sitting there going, "Man." You guys were really good parents, but you kind of, when it came to the entertainment aspect, you guys just really just cruise controlled. You guys just looked at it like, <laughs> oh, it's a movie. No big deal. And I will explain this really quick because, hey, what is a Those Two Geeks show without a massive tangent? When Mortal Kombat came out, it was the talk of the town. On Sega, it came out, and there was a deliberation going on in the Senate, in the U.S. Senate, over a video game, if people can actually believe this back then. People were actually interested enough to say that video games produce violence, video games produce the horrors that you see outside your window, which we all know today is an absolute farce. But I do remember in my small, tiny, tiny speck of a town, my parents were like, yeah, go ahead, get it. My dad got it for me. I had a big group of friends and he was like, okay, before you have your friends over, he's like, okay, let me look at this game. I was like, cool. And I think I was like eight or nine. And he looked at it and he goes, Mortal Kombat. He's like, yeah, this sounds kind of stupid. And he looked at it and he goes, oh my God, that's a lot of blood. I was like, yeah. I'm like, but it's cool, right? And he's like, well, yeah. He's like, are you bleeding? I said, no. He was okay. He's like, Joey, you're a halfway intelligent human being. I raised you. I love you. He's like, you do know that you can't rip people's spines out. You do know that you can't shoot lasers out of your eyes. And you do know that you can't do anything that's on this screen. I was like, well, yeah. He goes, great. Done my job. He's like, hopefully everybody else who lets their kids come over here have done their job too. Or I just got to draw up NDAs. I was like, okay. And so we, we, needless to say, would have parties. And like, I was the kid on the block 
when you had blocks and things were big deals and there was like one kid would get something. I was that kid always. And like everyone came to my house for Mortal Kombat. Needless to say, uh, it went. So your 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 parents really made you the popular kid in the neighborhood. Yeah. Right? Well, I wasn't popular per se though. If I was you, born you, you, your years... parents would have been Jack Thompson's nightmare. Dude, if I was ten <laughs> years later, I would have never been stuffed in a locker in my life. I would have been like Jack Kirby's kid. If I was ten years later, I missed the boat by ten years. The superhero boom, because I have been thumping this since I was in a cradle. But needless to say, everyone came over, played Mortal Kombat, and you cannot imagine out of, let's say, the dozen people that came, I'd say seven people's parents came over and had a huge thing with my dad, like, that sure. weekend, because, mm-hmm. oh, my son is going to learn this, and blah, 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 and my dad, God bless his soul, I love him dearly, my dad just was like, I'm sorry, does your kid eat paint chips? Is he a fucking idiot? He, he's like... Does he not understand that there's a screen and a controller? And I was like, wow, that's his argument. But that was my dad. And they stuck. And he, same reason I grew up on horror. I, I watched Freddy Krueger when I was two. I've, I've watched everything. My dad always never believed in censorship. He was just like, listen, censorship or for the week. He's like, you need to know what you got going in. You're an intelligent human being. You know right from wrong. You should be able to enjoy a medium. And if I ever have children, that's the way I'm going to raise my kids. Boy, did that bite no, my I, dad. I applaud, I applaud your dad taking the, um, uh, yeah. the initiative to really sit you down and just be like, look. Oh, he did. He is, did. You know, he that's great. Everything. That's fantastic. And I, Boy, I did it bite him in the ass that. when it came to porno. Well, <laughs> like that. That was when it Listen, felt. Short. I don't want. I don't want to know if you're into ass play. That's not what this. No, podcast no, 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 no. Is. Yeah, that was a joke. But, but like loosely, anyways. That was our tangent from the day. I just, I'm so glad you picked the topic because when you went with the Paul Heyman promo, <laughs> off camera, I guess we're gonna have to have this discussion, Matthew, because you and I are high of mind. But like, I didn't think we were gonna go in this direction. I thought you were gonna pull some, a swerve, like a Russo swerve. I'm really glad we oh, went this way. Okay. But- because so I Alex, learned something that I didn't have a clue on that publishers well, pay well, for there's this. More, there's still more to go. There's oh, I know. I'm ready. I'm so ready. Now, I'm, now lips are sealed. Go. Where, where, how important to the shop you work at is Free Comic Book Day, would you say? How, how big do they treat it? it? It's pretty massive. Like you have, you have the sales publicized long before it's going to happen, like weeks in advance. You're, you're going to get X percent off of this, X percent off that. Is it is it a way to clear inventory that hasn't been selling? Absolutely. Do, are there discounts on dollar bin books? Absolutely, because that's the fastest way to get it through. It's right. If you can encourage kids to buy to get into comics, even if they don't buy something that day, or the parents are, oh, hey, we'll pick up this this book. It's on sale. It's a graphic novel for five bucks. It, it's it's Batman. Why not? If you can, if you have. 10 kids come in and you can turn 20, 30% of them into return visitors, it's a win. Because yes, you're you're spending a bit of money up front to get the free books in. Mm-hmm. And then at that, after that, you then get a return visit that's coming back. You're invest, it's the same as basic investing, right? You, you spend a bit up front and you, your return is gonna be a lot better. We We tend to do, I think, it's, you get you can pick up to five comics. So if there's a dad and a kid coming in, sure, get 10. But if it's one person coming in, it's just five. And a lot of that is because if you're a regular, or even if you're not, if you're a speculator, people have been known to sell free comic book day comics at an instant. Well, it's obviously an insane Absolutely. markup because it's there's a free book, but it's yeah. not uncommon to see uh, the first appearance of someone go for an insane mm-hmm. amount because it's a preview of a book that ha- that will have the first appearance in and no one really knows that that's going to be worth a ton of money so spending you know two years down the road oh this free comic book day book is now worth 20 30 40 dollars that's amazing crazy Spider-Man. it was free amazing right? Spider-Man. yeah it's free comic book day is actually yeah. worth money mm-hmm. yes and, and then, years ago and, it was and overdrive and Alex, I, 
so so you you hit on so your shop offers you you can get up to five books now does that include five adult titles or five kids titles or any just five between them any just five okay. it's i think it, i think it's more a case of if a kid has six and they don't know which ones they want then no one's going to say no you've got to put one down right but it's sure, i think sure. it's more a um look dude let's not let's not take advantage of this we want to make sure that everyone that comes in can get something yeah. because it's one thing for a shop that has ordered enough so that everyone that comes in can get something but it may you don't quite know how many tourists are going to be around who's coming in if, if what right. the weather's going to be like yeah. there are there are some shops that have a lineup from six in the morning around the block because yeah. that's what they're looking for yes we what and, would be weird and, to me is that like mm -hmm. You used to be able to throw away free comic book days when this was at its mm -hmm. inception. I'm sorry. God, jeez. Inception. Like, 2002, Sam Raimi Spider-Man. That was when it first started. I didn't actually know that. Again, Matthew, thank yeah. you for educating. But there was, like, I would say back in, like, 2010, 2011, 2012, if I'm not wrong, I could go in and grab a stack of the Marvel and DC offering at my free comic book store which was New England, or if I went to another place, I could grab it with not anyone batting an eyelash. They'd be like, oh, you want five? Take five. No big deal. Now, I have missed the last two free comic book offerings, especially for Ninja Turtles, um, IDW. Both of them I have missed. I've gone back and got them on, you know, the, you know, the interwebs, but both of them initially I've missed and I've tried to have people put them aside and whatnot. They've become like vaunted now, but even this year, well, blood hunt, I couldn't get. And, and Joe, you, you speak to a really interesting aspect, which is, and, and Alex, you really hit on it as the speculator market has gotten more interested in free comic book day. Publishers have taken advantage of that by saying, mm -hmm. okay, we are going to put a first appearance or the first right. cameo appearance of a character or right. a concept or, or what have you into these. And, and now it, it wasn't until a couple of years ago that you actually put a ratio variant for yep. free comic book day titles. So now you can get like, it's like a one in 25 free comic book day ratio that, that they sell that is not for free. It's not generally right. given away for free, right? So, so the speculator market has absolutely changed how that's gone, yeah. but also stores used to order enough free comic book day titles that they thought would last them for months that they could still use as giveaways, mm. as little boosters right. for other promotions they would have down the line. Now, yeah. a lot of stores are ordering in order to sell out, quote unquote, of their free comic book day titles on free comic book day. Almost instantly, so right? It, yeah, we yeah, had because they don't they just don't want the back the, um, yeah so up until the pandemic mm -hmm. there would be a and we we did this because if ever there was a kid coming in with yeah with a parent and the the kid was looking bored now we have in our shop we had couches and a, a coffee table near the front so people could just sit down and, and relax so you got the big bang set up basically yeah yeah so yeah. we were but there would be free comic book day books on there throughout the year. And we would have, I think at one point we had three or four short boxes of free comic book day stuff that went right. back almost five years, just different books yeah. here and there. But those eventually when they went through coincided with shortly after the pandemic. And at that point, yeah. like, well, now we have four short boxes of stuff. We literally can't give away. Yeah, and right. people aren't coming in for this because they're coming in for their stuff and leaving or because it was, I mean, it, where we are in Canada, things were shut down a lot longer than I think right. where they are for you guys. Alex, yeah. how there many copies of Spider-Man Venom free comic book day do you guys have? None. Oh, really? None? Right. Okay. Yeah, you, which, you, is, you which is exactly my, yeah, which is exactly my yeah. point. Like, at this point now, oh, yeah. we we went through, you know, the, the books that are there that if they hadn't been selling, like, well, they've been here this long we may as well throw them not throw them out but i think they yeah, were donated yeah. somewhere one way or another sure, but, like sure they, they got gotten rid of basically and now some of them i think may have been sought after but 
they've been in our in our just around the corner from the front counter for so long that they were in the way and especially but after speculator market question aside like mm -hmm. people obviously pandemic wise people were mm -hmm. like oh everything with a marvel name on it is going to be big business big this big this big this my whole point of bringing up spider-man and venom was my lcs and all the surrounding lcs that year they couldn't give that book away if it was the cure to polio like they just had so many stacks of it i remember when i went in and i said hey can you put aside one for me they're like do you mind taking five and i'm not even kidding you and i still have what yeah five and it was a nothing well, and, anything and i think it all comes down to your business strategy to utilize the free product right like it, mm -hmm. So my the shop I used to work at, Forbidden Planet, what they did and what they still do is they don't have a table that allows you to just go and get the free book. What they would do is um, they would actually pre-bag sets of free comic book day books. Correct. And there was an adult set and there was a kid set. Yep. And the first person in line would literally get a bag with every free comic book day book in it. And you would keep doing that. And the later you were in the line, the fewer books you got because you started to run out. Exactly. And then what they would. So so that incentivized you to be the first person there. Yeah, because I you think you guys started the line outside the stores. Right. Because and, we never had also, those until you. And, and the thing about it, too, is the way that that works is it keeps people from holding up the, the quote unquote table that a lot of shops sometimes have where right. you, you want a line, but you don't want the line to stop moving. Right. Correct. So Correct. if people are just standing there and they're hemming and hawing and they don't know which book to get, um, they can take two, three minutes holding up the line that people are waiting longer and people are yeah. not in the store shopping. So by giving you a stack of books, as soon as you walk in yeah. um, that, keeps the line moving the problem is the the risk i should say is that well once people get the free books if they get it at the front of the store do they have any incentive to go into the rest of the store and keep shopping In whereas if store, you put absolutely right because it sells everywhere well it, it depends well and and this this brings to to the next question for mm -hmm. alex that i have and is there's a there's a very different viewpoint in terms of what promotion do you have in addition to the free comics right a lot of people do clearance sales a lot of people do everything in stores is x amount yep. off a lot of people will do signings and cosplayers mm -hmm. um vendors will come into their parking lot and sell stuff and almost treat it like a mini one-day convention mm -hmm. so yeah, Alex, exactly. you, what, what is it, the promotion strategy at your they, so the one where I'm at has a different set of promotions than the other two uh, owned by the same uh, guy. Mm -hmm. right. Just because yeah. of space, space issues. Yeah, so yeah, sure. the, the one that we're at tends to be heavy on back issues. Right. And mm -hmm. then basically it's a discount on anything that we've got a bit too much of. So it could be, right. I think one year it was board games. We, we were looking to get through a bunch of them. So that was on sale. That, because it's a free comic book day, board games never seems to be as big of a focus because it just doesn't right. it just doesn't have the same draw it, it tends to be a different mm -hmm. audience right. so mm -hmm. you would have maybe graphic novels but a lot of it is the used stuff so if we have used graphic novels that always yeah. will go on a, a steep discount because it's stuff that we got in trade for something mm -hmm. so it mm. isn't always like the money that you have in a lot of the used stuff isn't you don't have to get the, the exact same amount back that you would from a, a new graphic right. novel where the margin is, is totally different. The so exactly. So like with mm -hmm. a, a brand new graphic novel, if your profit margin is 10%, well, you're not really going to yep. want to discount it any more than five, unless you've got, Hey, we need to get rid of this much at cost. So we'll, we'll do it at cost. Yeah. But a used book, you can, you can steeply discount it, buy one, get one, that right. kind of thing. So Matthew, some of the other, can I add? Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, I would say okay. some of the others, one of the other stores has, like Matthew said, a massive parking lot. So there's stuff all in their parking lot. Um, discounts, again, used yep. books tend to still be the focus because that's the audience that you're getting in that day. 
Um, but I think they've had uh, writers, artists come in. I think Nick Bradshaw, you know, that kind of thing. So exactly. And yeah. and and before your question, Joe, just to to piggyback on on Alex mm -hmm. there, it's because you know because you were expecting such a surge or such a spike in foot traffic. It right. is it is one of the best opportunities to clear dead stock. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, because you have the sheer amount of people who haven't been in there in a while who may mm -hmm. not be familiar with the books or they're hunting for deals because the 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 thing about it is you are training a certain customer base to wait for free comic book day. Well, you're in the same way that you on. train them because they know the sales are coming because yeah, it's the same idea on. for like a black Friday, right? Yep. They know yeah, the yeah. big discounts coming. So they right. may, they may wait all year to do yeah. a big excursion for free comic book day. You're, so, you're Joe, banking sorry, on what was your, what was your No, question? no, no. I'm, I'm sorry, yes. Matthew. I apologize. Um, my mind is ablaze this morning. Um, so M Matthew, this is a question for you particularly. Are you sure. steeped in okay. uh, new England comics lore? particularly so new england are. is not one of the shops that i that i work with um i handle i handle stores on the west coast texas arizona and then i have a few chains um that i work with but new england is not one of them so okay. i'm not super steeped in in the lower I please enlighten me i guarantee you understand what i mean there's a property there's an ip that came out specifically in new england Kind of took off, got hot, got cold. It's hot again. Um, you must know what I'm talking about, right? What's the IP? And you have to know. New England. I'm just going to say New England because I, I trust is it, you. Is it about four teenagers? No. Okay. It's blue. The tick? There you go. I, okay. Oh, the tick. Sure, sure, sure. Ben okay, yep. England yep. is yep, the yep. reason that New England comics exists. And right. the tick is the reason blah, blah, blah. And like, so when you guys were mentioning, like, we would have, I call them boosters. But like, I don't call them boosters enthusiastically like I would as somebody who traverses the Comic Con scene very naturally. I mm -hmm. like when I look at this kind of thing, it's, to me, it's a, it's like a, a desperation Hail Mary. That's why I'm very happy to see that, like, free comic book day is picked up again. Because there was a couple of dark years. And it's funny. I, I What did I say earlier? I, I think I said 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. I think I, I specifically pointed out that quadrant. It, it kind of coincided with the dark years of WWE. Like the John <laughs> Cena, like, let's just keep our foot on the pedal and just cruise control the whole way and no one will care. Like, it's like the same thing. But what I wanted to really ask you is because this is a personal question for actually me. And I okay. will tell you, I will tell you. Joe, Joe from Boston on the line. How can I help you, Joe from Boston? Hi, Joe from Boston on the line. I got a wicked hard question to fucking ask you. I mean, I talked to Ben Affleck, and he didn't give me a good answer. So, I propose it to you two gents. Anyways, that's the worst Boston accent ever, and I am from that area. And I trained it out of me because you are a cartoon <laughs> if you sound like that, listeners. I don't care where you're from. I've been in business. Don't sound like Ben Affleck. It's not right. Just learn your R's. Okay, anyways. Um... My point is, you guys remember Magic the Gathering? Are you guys that vain? I, I yeah. think you are, Matthew. Okay. I mean, it's still going, Joe. It's yeah, still yeah, going. It's very strong. Magic, Magic no, no, still no, no, around. No. My whole point yeah. is, Ma Magic the Gathering, back in its inception, was vying for Pokemon's spot, if you remember correctly. Mm -hmm. I, I will give you just a touch on that. Pokemon yeah, go ahead. versus magic in our in our shops. There is no comparison. Is no it Pokemon? One, God no. No one comes in looking for Pokemon. Holy shit! That's the opposite here. Yeah, Canada no, really is bizarre world. Yeah, where where like if you come in, people come in. Oh, do you have any Pokemon? We've only had people asking for Pokemon wow. cards in the last like six months again. So we we oh if people are asking, we'll bring them back in. But so, it's still Magic the Gathering 
Yeah, that's it's a real it's a real yeah. cycle. For, we for we games, have binders especially. and binders and binders of loose Magic cards. We don't so need my, anything for Pokemon. My point is, the original Magic the Gathering, the original Magic the Gathering offerings that I used to have, my friends used to have, we all used to have. It's the same tale that my dad would talk about, you know, Mickey Mantle rookie cards and bike spokes, right? Sure. Same sure. thing. Same thing. Yes. So I can remember the cards. Leviathan, Black Lotus, blah, 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 so forth. I had all of them. Gave them away. I hated when I looked them up. But the point I'm trying to bring to you is, especially as a piggyback off of this discussion, which I think is cool to kind of shoehorn in, the comic book speculation market to me has died since 2020. 2020 was the boom. Everybody with any comic book, if you like, your grandmother clipped toenails, it was wanted. People wanted it because it was the first appearance of your grandmother doing that. Now people have kind of course corrected over the years and they're like, oh, Rocket Raccoon is not exactly what we thought he was in 2020. So therefore the value has dropped down to what it really is. The point I'm trying to say is there is a speculation market still out there. And my buddy brought it up to me. He's like, he's been trying to get me in this investment proposition for like months. And he's like, dude, the guy who created Magic the Gathering created this new game called like Wizards of the First World or something like that. That tells you how much I paid attention. And he's like, okay. The platinum package is 4500 Let's buy this. Let's sit on this for 20 years and sell it for two hundred grand. And I laughed. Now I might be stupid, but I'm also steeped in finance, too. And I laughed. And I died laughing. And he's like, why are you laughing? He's like, it's a proven thing. He's like, look what happened with Magic the Gathering. I'm like, Magic the Gathering is a freak thing that happened. The same way that Pokemon Gen 1 is a freak thing that happened. The same way that a Mickey Mantle rookie card in a spoke is worth what it's worth. It's worth what it's worth because when people think it's not worth something, it's worth something. If you have... You, you can use the Disney Lorcana for, uh, okay. as, as an example of this. We No, but... Oh, sorry. So we we didn't get many, if any, in because there was no interest in Lorcana yeah. initially. Right. So the first packs and the first seal boxes and the first boosters are worth a bit because not many people had it in. Right. After that, they're publishing right. and printing so many that right. Yeah, it's at you can, you one. Go, yeah, you can go wherever you want to go yeah. to whatever shop, and you can find some That's kind right. of Lorcana pack. Right. And Whereas, this is why I'm proposing it to you guys, because my buddy's been up my ass for months and he's pissed that I didn't actually fork it down and the Kickstarter has elapsed. And he's like, I don't so, understand. He's like, knowing how big of a collector you are, looking at your vast collection and everything, how could you pass up on this? And I said, yeah, I'll give you one example. And I think it's the only example. And I think it's a mic drop. If you love Star Wars. Kenner Star Wars is your pinnacle. It's the best you can get. Then there came this little thing called Power of the Force mm -hmm. that yeah. you can't give away for three times the value of what it's worth. Yeah, you have to copy, actually... copycats are hard, man. Like right. it's yeah. it's if, if you, I you, had... you got to be very careful with with copycats on that. Yeah, and and to your point, Joe, in 2020, what we saw market wide was that nostalgia in general everything went up best drug in the, the world the bag the back issue boom that really started in like 2018 um when you were having all these announcements for marvel tv shows mm -hmm. and dc tv shows um it was driving market prices up a, at an accelerated rate and i would talk to, to vendors and retailers at conventions and they'd be like i can't i don't know what's going to be hot like but not the, like 2020 right Matthew? Thing. No, I'm talking about 2018, 2019. They were saying at that point, like this book was a dollar 10 years ago and suddenly yes. it's going for 30 bucks. Yeah. And it shouldn't be, but it is. Right. And people are paying for it. So I'll, I'll price it. 
But the idea was by around 2020, before the pandemic hit, we were anticipating the bubble bursting around then. Yeah. The pandemic actually extended the rally. And and then it and it wasn't just comics, it was baseball cards, it was Pokemon cards, yep. it was magic the gathering cards. Anything Every, nostalgia, Hot Wheels. Anything, anything nostalgia went shotting up. And then in 2023, the bubble starts bursting, right? Suddenly this prolonged hot streak, it's coming down and down and down. But the problem is usually you see it happening on one IP or one format at a time. In 2023, though, we started seeing everything coming down in price on the back. Right, it on the back corrected. It, it did. It course it corrected, sense. but it course corrected all at once. Um, right, right. And yeah, that no, put, no, 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 no. It was a massive right. like cliff drop because it was. I mean, I was affected too. I um sure my my favorite comic book of all time because it was the year and the month I was born was John Romita's cover of The Hobgoblin tearing Spider-Man's mask. I adore that cover. And my dad actually bought it for me when I was very little. He bought it for me live. And then um, it, it, I, I have to find it someday. There's like a famous video of it in my crib. And then there's the video of Jack Lantern with um, the black costume Spider-Man on, I forget it, it's like 258 or something like that. It's the reason I just bought the Mafex Spider-Man and Jack or Lantern from Marvel Legends. But anyways, I bought Hobgoblin's first appearance in 2020 when I was on that sweet Trump money. I, I didn't care. It was like <laughs> toilet paper. I bought that Hobgoblin's first appearance for 700 bucks. I didn't even ask a question. I bought it slabbed. I bought it for like, uh, I think it was an 8.5. I bought it for 700 bucks. I was like, boom, take it. It's just not even one week's check. And then I sold it a year after. Now, this is where I screwed myself because this is a book that actually retained its value somehow. But most of these books, like Rocket Raccoon and like all these, um, like um, Guardians of the Galaxy, all these like Lobo, if you remember the Omega Men, all that stuff, Matthew. None of that shit retained its value. It just dropped well, off a cliff. But also, like, live-action Lobo plans went away. Well, yeah, they um, went away because... Rocket right. Raccoon is done because of Guardians of the Galaxy 3, right? right? right. So we, yeah. we don't know when, if the character's coming back. You saw, like, Fantastic Four is a great example I always have of the artificial inflation of a, yep. of a, of the anticipation of a movie versus... What happens afterwards in the six months leading up to the last Fantastic Four film, prices went up right. a ridiculous amount. And then as soon as the movie came out and bombed overnight, you couldn't get 20 percent of what are you, you were paying are you talking, for. It. Are you talking the, the Fox Fantastic Four? Yeah, the one with I'm, talking about, I'm talking about the last one that came out, the one that lost Fox. The right yeah, yeah, with yeah. the Surfer, Norman uh, no, with Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, and with Michael B. Jordan. Jesus, you're talking about like the gamer Doom. Yeah, yeah, I'm that talking about that. One of the worst so, movies ever. Um, I, have, yeah. I have said over the last five years, the best time to to sell any book to make money on it is before the movie or TV show comes out. And Alex has Correct. said this. I had a 361 so Spider Man, yep. great condition. I sat on it, and Alex has told me this on this program before. So this many times, like yeah. A, before this was even a big thing, listeners, before yep. you all joined us, Alex is like, dude, get the fuck rid of it. And I'm like, nah, Venom 2 is coming out. That's when I get rid. He's like, get rid of it. If you want to if you want to make money on it, sell it before the whatever comes out. Because if the movie Daniel doesn't do Woody well. Harrelson, Alex was yep. so right. Yep. If the movie dear, doesn't dear do listeners. well, you can't give it away. Yeah. If you have any Deadpool or Wolverine keys, uh, right you should start selling them now. But I'm yep. going to tell you this. You're, that's you're going to get the best Wolf price. Right you're going you're gonna to get the best price for Deadpool and Wolverine keys probably um, up until the week before, before San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. yeah. Before release date. So, so go ahead and sell those now if you're, if you're just doing it like a stock. 
because that yeah. is what speculator and the collectible yeah. markets are. It's just a form of the stock market. Yeah. And before uh, there was eBay, there was no there was no actual market to, to keep track of, which but is why eBay is so invaluable. But go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry, and I hope you guys aren't. Oh, go, go, go. But go um, anyone ever heard of a little book called um, Batman Adventures 12? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shittiest book. Terrible cover. Mike Parabek, rest your soul. Great artist. Garbage cover. Book sucks. Um, I had it, and I sold it the week before Suicide Squad. I actually effed myself really hard a couple years later, right now. But Bad. again, you Bad. are you're playing the stock market, Jeff. That's, Correct. If you still, I bet you still made some money on it. Um, would you have made as much money? Sure, no. I understand that. But that is, I, it's it's just like gambling. People are chasing the the unicorn of of hitting at the right place at the right time. Um, that is very, very, very hard to do with consistency. Yes. Um, Especially in collectibles. Mm -hmm. Very much so in collectibles. Now, Alex, though, I want to get back to your, your point. So one of the things that I've, you and I, in the original, you know, minute or two discussion that we had uh, about Without the common day before we side tabled it. No, no, you were there. You were there. Um, yeah. Is... I brought up the idea of I don't like as many sales on free comic book day. And you were like, you, you, you seem to very much disagree with you, but I want to, I want to talk about the I, evolution I'm hearing and seeing for free comic book day. Um, go, go ahead, Alex. No, so I'm actually on the same page as you to an extent. I, I don't think sure. free comic book day should be the day that, has all of the sales because like you said people have been trained to wait for them i think right, that right. if you're going to have sales do it on the stuff that's going to you're look deliberately looking to clear inventory or will have a return so that new readers will come back to, or will come to the shop right kids books so uh, this used is, books this is one the, of the things we're seeing like what we're what we're see, what i'm starting to see market wide and please give this to to the folks mm -hmm. you work with there is i'm starting to see a lot of people will do a small sale on free comic book day similar to what you're describing and it's it's 10 percent off or it's just on clear in stock or or, or bargain books or you know it's it's 10 percent off this what have you but what they right. do on free comic book day is they advertise a bigger sale or a yeah. bigger promotion the following weekend and the oh, goal okay. is the goal is you're getting this huge spike in foot traffic but you right. don't want that foot traffic to be there for one day you want to bring these people back right. so it's recurring if you, right and if you train them that you get your big sale on this one day they don't have the incentive to come back but if mm. you start saying hey we're doing something today but if you come back next weekend, there's an even bigger thing. Now, suddenly, instead of one week out of one weekend of May, you're getting a huge spike on. Right. You're going to get a huge spike for two weekends. And right. then you can use that second weekend to really solidify the habit of them coming mm. into the store and having right. a good interaction with you. Uh, so that's, that's, the new, that's the new strategy. That so, a lot of people are starting to utilize that I'm seeing, and that I, I really like and I appreciate. You I think guys it's a great had idea. me sold, and I this is a totally different perspective. Surprise, surprise. Sure. Um, from the consumer's perspective, you guys had yes. me totally sold on the publisher's side, this whole argument, until you likened it to Black Friday. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, how genius. Black Friday for comic books, funny yeah. pages, whatever, four colored worlds. How genius. I would disagree with you on that, Matthew. I would disagree with you vehemently on that, Alex. Not just Alex, Matthew too. Let's throw you both with boxing gloves. Um, I think that it is such a great idea to have a pinpoint presentation every year of a 
mark that you can set your watch to and say, I'm going in here on this day. I know I'm going to get my best value. I know I'm going to get buku offers. And I know that there's going to be something presentable. Something that shows that recurrently, I think is genius. The problem is with it, and this is where you come in from the publishing perspective, you've got to make sure that the quality is always what we expect coming in, a la the Marvel MCU, which has dipped in quality, right? So, like, you always have to maintain that, like, all right, I'm going in the free comic book day. I'm going to line out outside this store like it's Xbox 2005 when it's the first release, and I did that. Um, you want to give the incentive. And I, I love how New England Comics celebrates it. I think it's, it's a very smart way to do it. They don't just go, all right, all this in our bargain basement bins. Everything in the store is usually 35% off. Like, everything from top to bottom. Even grails. Everything on the wall. So, flowers, everything. So, here's my, yeah. here's my counterpoint to you, Joe. Yes, please. You talk about a Black Friday. But what uh-huh. about Cyber Monday? And that's, right. the, that's okay. the strategy I'm describing. Right. Is that makes sense. You have Black Friday, but at Black Friday, you are also being advertised for Cyber Monday. Right. So, so this is a similar idea, right? Yeah. You have a big sale yeah. on Black Friday. Sure. Right. You have a big promotion, I yeah. should say, on Black Friday. But then you have to have another promotion on Cyber Monday. And the usually piggyback. the Cyber Monday That's deals are even better than the Black right. Friday. Oh, they're always better. It's not even sometimes. Correct. They're always better. And Rogue will agree. That's very she does. Because guess what? My tradition has always been looking forward to Black Friday. I am the guy who would get up back in the dark days when you'd go to Walmart for the doorbuster at 2 a.m. I was that guy because my dad was that guy. And we used to do it religiously. And then, like, it's dipped off over the years, but it's never dipped off since COVID the way it's dipped off. And the way it's dipped off is Cyber Monday is just so much better than Black Friday. What's the point of a Black Friday? when you have a Cyber Monday, right? And well, that, the goal I'm would really be to have a you different that promotion. It's, it, you can't do the same promotion twice. No, but That's it, why you have better deals. Like it's, it well, but here's no the question. thing. You only get the free comics on free comic book day. You don't get the free comics right, right. the following weekend. So you change up the sales. You change up what the sale is on. You change up the amount of discount. You change up the, the type of promotion so that you don't feel like it's a retread the following weekend. It's it's something different that is as appealing as the yeah. free comic book day in most, and of itself. Most stores have enough product that you don't have to put everything on sale on, on free comic book day. Yeah. And a lot of the discounts we have on the stuff that you're trying to clear can be up, I think, up 20 to 25% on other stuff yes. that you, you're just trying to say, hey, maybe we'll sell a bit of this, but if it doesn't go, that's fine. We, it will still go eventually. It's a 10% discount, right? Like it, so it's barely the taxes. So Alex, in some cases, I'm going to put you in the hot seat here. Please don't get mad at me because we come from the same space. We are very lucky enough to get the forwarded um, preview promos or whatever they're called of many, many comics that come out per weekly. You do the, um, the, what is it? It's the, um, oh my God, I'm so sorry. It, it, the column you do that it's like underrated. Okay, so you yeah. do underrated, right? You surely get the same email I get even these years later from Brett with all the promo packages. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you also spend your money in the LCS. Same way I do. I do. Yeah. Do you spend as much money? I would argue you probably don't. Same way I don't. I actually, I actually spend more because well, I am proud more- of you. I am more likely to buy the stuff that I know I'm going to like. Okay. If I've, or like, do you know how I buy every Valiant book? Wolverine you buy in the store, huh? So I would buy 
every Valiant book that came out and I would immediately bag and board it and put it right in a box because I've already read it. But I bought it yeah. because I love the publisher, I love the characters, right. and I wanted right. to su- help support. So anything like right. that, like crashing, I would, I still buy the books. I still same. I, right, I still picked up Thank you. Do a power bomb, um, murder falcon, like that kind of stuff that I'm oh. really into that I want to read and enjoy and support the creators, because otherwise folks like Matthew, like, oh, hey, yeah, it was really good. Well, did you buy it? Yeah. Well, no, I got it for free. Right, oh, right, right. No, not... And we, we have that luxury. Yeah. We get that, we get that promo all the time. I don't have it as much as you. I've been cut off because I haven't been as active. And that's fine. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but, like, Powerbomb. Pfft, eh. I wanted to actually ask Matthew this, because he's the same vein as I am. Um. Mm-hmm. Boom Studios, WWE, they had a published comic book for a couple of years. They did. Do you, do you recall it? Yeah, I would pick up an issue here or there. Um, I, I went and read the whole 25 issue run. Yeah, um, I read parts of it. I didn't love it. It, it wasn't. It what was, did it you was trying though? to do. You're me. You know, I here's here's my here was my I, I guess for me and I want it, and yeah. look I've I I've met one of the writers on there Dennis Hopeless great guy yep, very I good writer him. yep I um for for me it it didn't connect with how I view the, the like for me the main content is still you know the live action aspect of it and. I I don't look at it in the I guess I don't quite the comic was neither fish nor fowl for me. It was trying to be like sort of kayfabe, but not kayfabe it was. in, in yeah, certain it aspects. It skirted and, the lines all the time. It, and I, and for I, me, I would have been more interested it, in it yeah. if the Alex comic should. had have been um, delivered, like talking about the real life. So you oh, see it does. Mark, it does. Mark Calloway as opposed to the Undertaker. Alex, go pick it up. Go read it well, because I, this is why I'm gonna sometimes it does, after. and then sometimes the new day is on a time travel adventure. Well, so I will like, say, yeah, but I will say the thing that took me out of it and it's selfishly is the artists. I hated the character aspect of it, I hated it. I was trying to remember who the artist was on it. Uh, I don't remember Matthew, but like he was good, he was good. Was he the like, same he, guy like, that did Chew? I think it might be. But, like, you'd look at Becky Lynch and go, yeah, that's Becky Lynch, for sure. But that's Becky Lynch if I saw her at, you know, the Tribeca, um, you know, the Grand Festival that was running outside of whatever New York part I'm trying to display as, because I'm clearly not a New Yorker. But, like, what I'm saying is, like, it would be like if you got a character at a, you know, a popcorn festival, if you got it at, like, a... um you know, outside theme park type thing. Mm -hmm. They didn't match the gravitas of the storytelling with the art. And that's a big thing because what is professional wrestling? And this is why I love Matthew as my favorite guest. And I will say that I am very sorry, Marcus and Naso and very sorry, Jason here, but Matthew's our best. Why? Because he gets us, he's high of mind and yeah, he's in the click. Anyways, um, it's just the thing is professional wrestling is very tough to put into a comic book format because it's so visual. It's so visual. You can count also, with being. Sorry. The challenge also with with it is. Because professional wrestling is coming out weekly, yep. sometimes daily, if you count the mm-hmm. social media stuff the character that the performers will do the comics also for me never felt as urgent they were years because you're yeah you're always behind you're always and you're you're not a little behind you're very behind no you're 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 years behind because of publishing because of yeah the publishing schedule the time it takes to write the story and the artwork and the licensor approvals adds right. a very, very big amount of lead time to any licensed comic, including WWE. 
Right. Um, and so that was another thing for for that series in particular that made me go, eh, I'll wait around. I'm, I'll pick up guess you didn't later. Finish it. Like, no, no, I didn't finish it. So, um, like, for me, as a person who hates Roman Reigns prior to the Tribal Chief, hated him sure. so much. Sure. It was kind of refreshing to get a personal take, which is a half kayfabe half reality based take never in continuity because continuity is always happening in front of your eyes it's like trying to capture the news on cbs you've missed it already when you're trying to put pen to paper what i love and dug about it was it it gave these nuances because i just read it recently it gave these nuances that like are probable but not factual but you could consider them, right? Like the backstage politics and the things that they displayed, you're like, oh my God, I could believe this. But like something stupid, like the shield being on the top of a truck trailer eating potato salad before the debut. And then it being fractured when Seth breaks them apart. And then it's just Dean and Roman eating potato salad. And then it just keeps on going down. And it's like, Dennis Hopeless has some really bad ideas. You're not selling the series for me, I'll be honest with you. All right, I'm sorry I'm not selling you, (laughs) Mr. AEW Mark, who would love to watch Tony Khan steer his coffee with a, you know. I honestly, I haven't seen seen any wrestling in so long. that An AEW comic series, I would stay so far away from that. Oh, I would stay so far away from it. But anyways. it's, It's the kind of thing that, and I know Matthew, you're, we're we're going to be wrapping up soon because you've got to run. But oh, oh, you have that, to run, Matthew. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, it, like, wrestling and comics to me is a medium that doesn't go together. It's a tough medium I, to capture. And I, I think, like Matthew said, it's more the urgency of what what you are seeing yeah. in the daily yeah. performances. Yeah. Tying it back to free comic book day, I don't know if I would ever bother picking up a free wrestling comic. Is is my is fair. my level of interest in it because it's something that it works in a live action but in in a comic book where you can have sci-fi robots you can have men controlling metal the sound of three dudes eating potato salad on a truck that's nothing for me right like it's 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 the same thing thing, as um all right smarty pants i'm gonna end i would i would say do a power bomb work so well because it's not a professional wrestling comic it's a story of family with professional wrestling as the lens and but it, it does and it's larger than reality in real life but also it's outside it because it's fictionalized um yeah. you are consuming the only kind of first run content for it yep. so i think it's easier to sort of get lost and more invested right. in in a series like do a power bomb for for me um, mm-hmm. Like I, I actually worked. I worked on a pitch with a co-writer for about a year of a fictionalized pro wrestling um, comic, and and basically I was told uh, by one of the editors that we worked with it on, and like people were done with pro wrestling comics thanks to the He's WWE series. Idiot. Like people were were finished. Like no major publisher wanted. Right pro wrestling comics you could go self-publish like daniel warren johnson yeah. did yep um but that would be really the only route for pro wrestling comics at that point and and still to this day um, Matthew, we know he's an idiot do you know but the thing is Joe, is i would disagree with that because i don't remember the last time i sold any comic for in the shop that had anything to do with pro wrestling that wasn't because when powerful. have you had it offered they're on it, the show. They're on. They're on the floor all the time. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're, they're, they're out past there. Offerings. Past offerings. Yeah. But that's just right it. Now, like, no one's looking for back issues in it. So mm-hmm. if it, I, that's the kind of thing that I don't see any kind of demand in the supply and the audience. I don't what? think there's enough of a crossover between a comic fan and a wrestling fan who would also want to read a comic about a. a there's wrestling. a wise man who said what we're watching unfold in front of us every week to week and every PLE. Is what the kids call cinema, and I would agree at certain points, not always. 
I would say that pro wrestling in a comic book format is very dicey. It's very hard. Mm -hmm. I would say you cannot do it as AEW WWE. It's not viable because it's ever changing. It's always yeah. just continuous. But do a power bomb, the indie offerings. I think they're pretty cool. What I wanted yeah. to Joe, as, I'm going to tell you about a story, and Rogue, Rogue. is going to tell you about a story called uh, <laughs> Ringside by Joe Keating. I want you to go ahead, look it up, and go Hello. try and read it. Southern Bastards through pro wrestling, essentially. What the page. My final and, thing was because I didn't know Matthew and, and had to leave us. It did not get bought a lot. And it was not a bad book in any way, shape, or form. But it was not, it did not have a huge name creator. It was not tied into WWE and it never found its audience. And that is a book that gets cited by people when okay. you try and pitch a pro wrestling I comic. I will check it because I, the, the ones that I know is Headlocked, the one you mentioned. Also, not a book that gets out. a lot of, it, right. it's also not heavily bought, right? Exactly. Headlocked. And yep. Headlocked is, is the example of how you do it because they're all independent. And they were promoted. Uh, and they get pro wrestlers involved, and they get promoted within yeah. the pro wrestling. Circle. Mick Foley, Ric Flair, they were promoted yep. heavily. Yeah. And they could not get distributed by Diamond. No, they couldn't because move there was not either. enough demand to to make it worthwhile. Right, but um, the the thing I wanted to say because Matthew, I didn't know that you get the um the Clintons expose, you know, exit. Because you're so vaunted and you don't have the time. And I'm just joking. But um, my whole thing I wanted to say was we're, we're going to taper off with this. And I could do this for three more hours. That's how much I love talking to these people. You guys are listening. I get to have these conversations. I just want to put it like that. And to me, it's a joy. Um, the biggest, arguably biggest movie of the year, period coming up is in july deadpool and wolverine right correct am i wrong it could depending be depending on who you talk to you no. okay okay i think i'm right so we're just gonna go that i'm right do you think something like free comic book day has an effect on something like that that big with the machine in motion i'm gonna argue with you before you even guys open your mouths i'm gonna say no I'm going to say free comic book day doesn't mean a spit to something like that. Of course Please, not. It's, it's, a, no, it, it's a, it's a totally different industry like thing, right? You're not going to encourage people to go to a movie based on a free comic book day. Movies are significantly more watched than comics are read. What you do have though, is the reverse. Mm -hmm. That book, that movie absolutely had a, influence on free comic book day this year and marvel put out a title called deadpool and wolverine world Thank war you. three number one correct the so wednesday before free comic book day so that it would be on sale yes on free comic book day and that book absolutely benefited from the timing of fcbd and the fact that the trailer had already dropped you read it right movie. so and that is why joe field put forth the idea of free comic book day in general and it continued into this very year and that is the full circle what up Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games. 
you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.